Who's got a pen? I need to steal a pen from somebody. Can you tell me a pen, brother? From Burbank, California, at Starburns Castle, it's the very first time that Harmontown is in session from the beautiful confines of the weird warehousey thing that is Starburns Castle. Let's bring up Spencer Crittenden, shall we? What up? Oh, yeah. It feels good, doesn't it? It feels in session. It feels extra sexy. Yeah. Speaking of extra sexy, let's bring up the mayor. Oh, I guess a thousand times now. <laughs> the mayor of Harmontown is Dan Harmon. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks for joining us at a temporary location uh, or, or, or whatever, an experimental location. Is, it, is it, it not permanent? What's the, what's the we status? Don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't make big moves. I, 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 I work organically. I, uh, I want Why do to... they call you Big Moves Harmon? <laughs> it's an ironic nickname. It's like, it's like, it's like, it's like in prison they called me Tiny because uh, like <laughs> the average height is 5'5", five five and I, I was like, like I'm, I, you know. But, uh, so how was prison? Prison was great. What, what were you in for again? Yeah. I, wa- I watched a, uh, I started watching this show, what the hell is it called? Uh, World's Most Dangerous Prisons or Inside Them or something like that. Or, it's, called, it's called Inside Them, colon, World's Most Dangerous Prisons. <laughs> Uh, it's some guy who has like a kind of a uh, he's he's from wherever uh, the uh, that that uh, what the shrimpy guy uh, what's his name he's in the phone booth thing where they got to talk on the phone or he gets shot uh, Colin Colin, Colin F- Farrell Colin Colin Farrell uh, is this guy that looks like him he shrimpy uh, he's a little sh- I don't think he's a large man I don't think Colin Farrell they call him a uh, 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 yeah, uh, moose uh, the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, there's a guy, and he then he goes and he gets himself locked up in the world's most dangerous prisons uh, throughout the world. There's a prison in Honduras. I guess that's the murder capital of the world. That's probably an easy title to claim, like best pizza or whatever. Mm-hmm. But uh, the, but but the, there's a, the prison there. It's like built for like I don't know. Let's say 70 people. I'm pulling numbers out of my ass. There's like 700 people in it. It's like very overcrowded, as most prisons are. We are generating more bad people than good people these days. It's a buyer's market. Um, the uh, it, 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 there, there's they, they at a certain point. It's like it's escape from New York. They like pull, the guards pulled out, and they just like rolled wooden batons like by the box in there and said like, whoever the people you trust the most are, they're the new guards. Uh, <laughs> And so some of the murderers have sticks, and that's their system, and it works really well. <laughs> like, the guards can't go in there. Right. They, they, they go in there at night to lock up. I guess they have, like, it's, a, it's sort of like w- a... W- wouldn't, wouldn't the bad guys get the sticks first? Like, wouldn't the they bad want- guys have the sticks, <laughs> right. as one would argue in all of, uh, all of society. Uh, it just kind of tends to be that way. Good guys don't want sticks. Um, and, and, and so in this prison, like, <laughs> some of the rapists and murderers have been deputized to beat the other ones but, that get but, out of line. But they're, they're deputizing each other? Like, they're saying, hey, uh, crazy guy, like, like, you, you like sticks. Like, how, how do they pick it? I don't know how they picked it. There's a guy at the top that insists he profits nothing from it, uh, who's, who says, while well, telling you, if you want a bed, it costs $135 uh, and all this stuff. And the, it's, the whole place has a kind of, I mean, there was no, everyone's like lifting weights and everything's very scary and everyone's kind of leering at you. But what you didn't see was like mass chaos. Uh, and it was, really? so it was just like this Con, uh, Colin Farrell-looking guy going like, "Oh, I'm filling buckets of water!" Ho, ho, ho! Uh, and then he would go and talk to all the 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 mucky mucks within this system, none of whom are guards. And then he'd like shoot pool with the guards on the outside of the system that the guards are guarding but can't get in. The guards' job to make sure that all 700 of these people don't at some point go, "Hey, there's 700 of us. Let's all escape at the same time." <laughs> That is their single task, is to keep that day from happening. How they do that, I, I, I guess they, it has something to do with the fact that what separates the prison from the uh, rest of Honduras, which is like a chain-link fence that you had at your grade school playground, um, is which, which drugs are just flying back and forth over the top of it. I think the people in there are kind of happy. 
the prisoners are, I mean, they're like, they'd like to be out if they could leave any time they wanted, but they can't leave any time they wanted, so they've created a society for themselves that includes weekend-long conjugal visits. The wives and children come to visit them. They showed that weekend happening, and there's no, if you fuck with the wives or children during that weekend, like, you, it's like, it, it, you know, obviously there's repercussions. There's repercussions if you piss off the fucking murderers that have sticks of Abdui. Um, the, the, the law is laid down within that prison, and then the guard's, like, shooting billiards with the host of the show who's saying, like, how's it... So, would it work... Do you guys want to be... to have control back? Because one time they tried to take control back, and everyone just went... Ah! and waved their shirts around like strippers and threw garbage cans at them and they had to leave. They're like, okay, all right, we'll, we'll come look for drugs later. Uh, and they were like, yay, we're in prison. <laughs> we're free. How do you think you would uh, handle prison if you had to do like, like real time, like federal time? I would time? start by killing myself the day I was sentenced to prison. <laughs> Because guys like me do not know right. what movies you've seen. Now, okay, let, let's get specific. Day, day one, you're in prison. You go, okay, I want to kill myself. I'm going to be here for, for six years. I want to kill myself. How do you do it? Because Wait, no, they, no, no. They, I do it in court when the judge says, you're going to... Pre-, and I go, bang, bang, bang on the, on the... I take his gavel and I stick it through my eyeball. If I, cause I could, because the, if he did the pre, I knew the rest of the word would be isn't. Right. So I'm just like gouge, gouge. You think you could make it from the, the, the desk you sit at to the gavel? I with, without know. a bailiff like, shutting, shutting it you depend- down? I mean, look, it depends oh, yeah. if Batman was in the gal- uh, gallery, you know, like uh, in that well, one movie where Batman couldn't even make it to protect uh, Harvey Dent from getting his face tooed. <laughs> Remember that movie where Batman's in court in his Batman outfit? They, they explain Harvey Dent's uh, turning into Two-Face. It was one of those older Batman movies. There was a mafia guy, and he had a, revealed he had a jar of poison on the witness stand, and he went, eh. And then it cut to Batman in the court going, no! And then it cut to Harvey Dent going, yikes! And holding a manila folder across half of his face. Hence, his transformation into Two-Face. A folder? Yeah, I guess it's an older movie that, that, than you kids uh, have seen. It's before that Christmas. was the Dark Knight Rises, right? Or Returns or something? This is the second of these Nolan Batman movies. No, no, I don't think it was a Nolan movie. That was oh. a, I think that was a... Doesn't he hold up a folder in that new one, too? I think it's a folder. I think everyone holds up a folder when Bane takes over because he goes like, I give you back your city! Hold your folders high! And everyone holds up a folder. I think that's what you're thinking of. So, so Dan, uh, you're you're a new gun owner. (laughs) Say what? You got a weapon now. You got a gun. No, I haven't picked it up yet because things... Right, okay. Because it turns out, it seems like it's as hard to usurp democracy as it is to maintain it. I feel like we're well, just. Yeah. I feel like this whole country is just going to collapse. Were you getting into, a gun to overthrow democracy? <laughs> I was getting a Be gun. Be honest. Be I was, honest. I was, I was, this is a safe space. I was getting a gun to, <laughs> to protect my soup and women. Right. Uh, in the event of total economic destabilization, sure. which might result in uh, my neighborhood looking up at my home, which looks like Victor Frankenstein's home. Right. <laughs> like, like, like in, in a village of people who only know that I've been robbing their graves to assemble some sort of monster. Um, I, I, you know, I just, I just wanted to have a power tool in my home that, uh, that, that can make drills people holes and faces people <laughs> in, in people that want water, you know, more than they want politeness. <laughs> do you, do you have fantasies? About like actually like what well, you, you must because like you you've you've bought a gun that that what would happen like if somebody came up your steps and demanded your water no or your I women? don't that I would argue that that is fallacious logic I bought the gun because I don't have fantasies about what I'd do if 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 shit went that far I, be, I that's why I got the I wanted to buy the gun is from the impulse of being feeling like I am not a person that could be relied upon in a situation of such heightened crisis. That, uh, you know, th- th- so, so no, I don't sit and think, man, I hope a guy comes up my sidewalk. Well, I'm not saying you, you hope that happens, but like, no, but you, I have, and I also haven't entertained all I, I, I just have vague, a vague like cloud of like chaos in my head where I'm like, well, look what has happened in the, in the, 
in the in the the first ten days of this presidency made me look at the ten day waiting period that you need to get a gun <laughs> as a crucial ten days. And I now have what I what makes me feel very comfortable, which is a one day a drive to Burbank waiting period. Um, I have a gun waiting for me in a store run by guys who know how to use guns. I haven't. I I wanted to. You know. So I I'm saying like. I'm feeling better now. Maybe that's what the waiting period's for. Right. It's, it's sitting over there. I can go pick it up any time. It's probably better there than in my cabinet. Well, when you were shopping around for, like, on, on our little Slack, uh, what, what, what is Slack? Uh, mess- Slack, it's a coordinating app for communicating with teens. No, teams. Teams. <laughs> teams. <laughs> I, I was thinking of Snapchat. <laughs> You're thinking of 4chan. Yeah. Uh, uh, th- there's the the Burbank firing line, which I've been to a couple times. I'm, I'm not a gun guy, but I've shot there a couple times with friends that have guns, and it's you know it's it's fun to go shoot a gun, but I, I wouldn't ever want one. Uh, but I I just found out that gun uh, fi- uh, indoor firing ranges there's loads of fucking suicides. People go in there. And they've had three suicides. Oh, people actually go there to, to kill themselves. No, they go in there to rent a bullet. They, they, they go, oh, yeah, here's my credit card. I'll be right back. <laughs> and they go, bang. And they fucking shoot their fucking brains all over the, the, the person next to them. And it, there's been three suicides at the firing line recently. And apparently that's not just there. It's everywhere. Like, like, now, what do we think of that person? Is that person a bad person? Is that person a... Yeah, no, they frugal, suck. Frugal. I think that person is a good planner. I'm glad they don't shoot other people. It'd be so easy. And then, you know, it's just the people who would be at a gun range, so it's not like Right, heroes. well, there's, that's the first thing. Is they're, they're revealing that in the throes of depression enough that life means absolutely nothing to them, that they don't do they don't something hurt people. that you could do if you thought life meant nothing, which right. is cheat at the Grand Theft Auto game of life and just go bling, blang, bloom, bloom. Like, like, like just to see what would happen before you boo boomed. Um, so in a way, gun ranges provide a valuable like suicide booth service. <laughs> I, I just think that's really interesting. That, I just that, don't think I could ever go back to a, a firing range and be relaxed. I, yeah, also, no. I'm not relaxed because you're holding a gun. Uh, it's, 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 it's it's stressful. The firing uh, the firing line in Burbank on Victory, I think. Uh, I went there once. I'd never fired a gun. They said, uh, "Sir, have you ever fired a weapon before?" I said, "No, I haven't." And they go, "All right, so fill this out." That, like, like, like all, you have to you know, sign some waivers and shit. And they said, uh, the first thing that you're going to shoot here is the 357 Magnum, which is a cannon. Uh, and they're like, this, this is to teach you some respect. And it was fucking bonkers. That, that, that thing is so loud and so scary that I couldn't ever relax. But now if I think that the guy next to me might just go like, ah, I'm going to fucking go and kill myself. Like it's, yeah. Well, I think it's, I think, look, you're going to laugh when I say this, but there's, there's something very uplifting about that. That, <laughs> the, that because right. we're, we're constantly talking to, uh, we're arguing with, uh, between people like, the, well, in a pre Trump era, there was a big religious connotation that had to do with the division between the left and the right, particularly in the, the idea of like, oh, uh, what are we going to do if there's no God, there's no morality and all this stuff? And like the, the, the you know, practical minded atheists among us, the people, it's like, hey, I, I don't need a, a boogeyman or a fairy tale or a superstition, uh, not, to, not to devalue anything that anyone has a personal relationship with, but I'm just saying like, like people don't need that in order to do the cool thing, to do the nice thing. An argument could be made that people are particularly geared to that's a perfect example of a situation you're holding a gun there's literally a lane of people on either side of you you've de- you've come here because you have decided that life itself means so little you obviously aren't fearing that you're going to wake up in a pool of lava with like pitchforks going up your butt because that those people definitely make sure you know that suicide's one of the things that'll make that happen so you have made your peace with chaos you have made your peace with oblivion you have uh, an emotional thing going on in your head where the pain of living is so high that that you just want it to end and you don't as you step out the door do this horrible trollish thing you know that is not what most of us want to do we, we are not held in line by getting away with it there's no cops in this room there's no cops like uh, 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 there's no cops in this room <laughs> Well, if there's one outside, he wouldn't let me walk in that door. I, there, yeah, are, there are paid employees of Harmontown that could fucking kill you if I snap my fingers. Do not heckle me. 
but there are no cops in this room, man. Um, but, but it's like, we're not held in line by, you know, we are, we are not animals. And these Honduran prisoners are, you know, I, I like the guy's like cutting vegetables with a guy that killed someone with a machete. And he's, and he's saying, it's weird. I'm cutting cucumbers and you, you cut someone with a machete. And he's like, ha, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so true. Chop, 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 chop. Um, I, it, 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 um, <laughs> I don't know how that supported my point, but it was just something that popped in my head. I, 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 it's, you, you, it's a reason why I want to keep watching this series. It's are like, are uh, you getting a gun, Spencer? I don't know. Should nope. I get a gun, you guys? Well, no. I think I heard one yes and one no. So, <laughs> so there it is. No, you couldn't. You could, you 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 posted a very in, in, in a, but you you're very you're very passionately anti-gun. I know a lot. I know a lot of things, and here's what I know: guns kill people. I don't want to kill people. I got to say, Dan, I I, 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 I know you don't like people. being like uh, gainsayed, but I, I don't like the gun thing. I, no, I'm, no, I'm, like, I, look, I, it, it, make, is, it makes me uncomfortable. My decision to get a gun is not a thing that I don't expect to be gainsayed on. Okay, so let's. You're right. I don't like to be gainsayed. For, what the fuck is gainsayed? It's for the um, apocalypse. I I I, br- I brought it up as a confessional thing because I consider that purchase a a conf- I, I I I'm I'm confessing about it. I'm not. Up, I'm not telling people that uh, that I did the smartest thing in the world that I recommend everyone do. I, I I'm sharing with with people that these are crazy times and that we're all dealing with it in weird ways and that liberals are becoming uh, anti Nazis and anti Nazis are becoming Nazis and like you know the, the people who used to say maybe freedom of speech is overrated are now saying I love the second amendment uh it's like 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 it's confusing times and we're scared and how are we dealing with it and what do we do and I I I wanted to you know I'm not a person with solutions and I'm not a pundit and I'm not a I'm not an academic I dropped out of college I I so I I'm gonna share what I'm going through like I'm not gonna leave a fucking molecule out of it I bought a gun (laughs) I bought a gun because that's how like that's how that's how close to the doomsday line the it feels the clock thing with the doomsday clock what do they call it the doomsday clock <laughs> <sighs> um it, it, i i bought a gun because of the unknown i didn't buy a gun because i thought anything specific was going to happen i bought a gun because for my entire life of should i buy a gun the pachinko ball of logic always ended with of course not and now we are in times where it landed somewhere else and i think that's notable i don't think it's admirable i don't think it's inspirational i immediately already having since talked about it i got a tweet from a guy that was like what would you recommend the uh, where did you get the glock thing and i was like whoa shut it down shut it down i'm not going to have conversations where i proactively influence your decision about these th- these things like and God knows we're minutes from another Sandy Hook, at which point it's going to take on another religious connotation of like, 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 holy shit, I'll be ashamed of myself for ever using the word gun again for a little while. I, I, like, like, so, like, don't just value my candor, my confession, my honesty. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I, I, I bought this thing because the morning that uh, after the election, I went downstairs and like after an evening of my girlfriend staring off into space... Like, I, the moment she saw my dog sitter, they exchanged niceties, and then one of them said, how are you doing? And they both burst into tears. And then everywhere I went, everyone had been crying all morning, and then they had to dry their tears, and they were hollow people they, 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 that had to get back to work. And I felt emasculated. I felt helpless. I felt like there was something I had to be able to do. I'm not Sirhan Sirhan. I don't think the thing I need to do involves the gun. I feel like I have no recourse to power. And that is an arrogant, narcissistic, white privilege, straight white male-like reaction that is notable. It's important to measure it. I bought a fucking gun. Like, does that, does that mean, I, it's like, I, I didn't delete my Uber app until it was important to defeat Uber because I was fighting another white guy. I heard, I heard 900 stories from women about how fucking horrible Uber was, and then the day that it was fucking, it was a way to give another white guy a black eye, I was like, delete. Like, I love Lyft now. Tell me about your podcast, you fucking weirdo. 
our next guest is. We should, we should. We should bring out our guest. What am I doing? I, I told him. Here's how the show works. I go up and I talk for ten minutes, and then I, and then I'll bring you up. Um, uh, do we? Oh, yeah, okay. You're you're ready to go. I, I just met this guy on another show that I did. Let's just get to know him at the same time because I said you should come on my show, and he's uh, he's a rapper and a and a and a. And and a and a creator of beats. I don't know if the title would be DJ, but but he's his name is Open Mike Eagle. He, he, you go, you go ahead. You can you can you can move everything you want. I can keep talking too. He, he brought his own stool on stage. Yeah, that's a that's a power move. I think you're allowed to bring your own furniture yeah, on stage. Great. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Chicago way. Not only is it just like I'm adding furniture to the mix, but also like you hefted it with such ease that it's like I'm a powerful man. Yeah, I don't need a gun. I, I need it. Yeah, I mean it's a, it's a small stool though. Maybe. No, I I'm not saying it's. A, I, I could I could move that one it's around. It's the too. appearance of power. That's the way it's yeah. a power move. It doesn't have to be a heavy stool. He he brought it up on stage like he made it. Like, yeah. like, like he had he, he carved that out of a single piece of wood. <laughs> Uh, let's do a test while Mike Eagle, Chris, are we ready to do a test where we, uh, what if I said I wanted to cut to a photo for the, oh shit, he's running. Okay. I didn't mean to do that. No, I, no. I, I, this is the test. This is the I, test. I didn't know. I didn't realize. I didn't know. In the like, future, you might be able to, we could just walk probably walking. Or speed. I could. Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> Chris, what if I said I wanted yeah, to Yeah, we uh, did it. White people, white people and one honorary woman. So, I want to. How, how, how do they let a woman sneak into that fucking photo of creepy, gross? Just this is this shriveled. is a poster of uh, now you see me too. I think. Look at their f- <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about a theory I have about this photo, or rather, an obsession I have about this photo. Now, uh, uh, assumption number one that I'm allowed to make because of the geometry of this photo. This is a tripod, mu- tripod mounted photograph. This, this is not a uh, quick. Uh, sure, hey, like Secretary of Labor, uh, labor us a photo um, uh, with your Samsung and a bit while, while people hack it and so they Shit, can see two, nuclear yeah. launch codes in your fucking patio. Um, the, 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 the lines are lined up here. This is a tripod mounted shot. Uh, I, it's been swiveled because any human in their right mind would center the desk in the frame. Uh, <laughs> There are, an almost e- there are an almost equal number of people on both sides, unless you count homophobic pants over here, who, who I think was either... I'm trying to figure out if he's doing a power play and showed up late. No, he, he set the timer. He was the guy that went over to the camera. Wait, Jeff, no. I'm sorry, but... He ran in the there. The camera's been swiveled. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. The, 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 on the, on the, uh, on the, what the audience is, uh, right side of the frame, what you see is a, you could measure that line. You would take half of that line and you would put it over here if you wanted to know where the frame would be if this desk were centered. It would cut right across Pence's shoulder. And if Pence wasn't in the shot, by the way, over here, uh, Herman Munster, sec- secretary of fucking crazy pumpkin head thumbs. <laughs> Uh, a, a living golem from the, not from Lord of the Rings, from the Hebrew tradition, a, a, an animated man uh, brought here for the purpose of vengeance. Um, and behind him, who has two thumbs and looks like Chris Farley's ghost? <laughs> uh, it, it, that, that, guy's, that guy's head would be a little over to the right, which right. he wouldn't be bent like that. He is scrunching in because the camera moved this way. Because the camera pens, moved yeah. this way. I believe that these two aren't getting along for good reason. Yeah. I don't think Pence was told this photo was happening. He I ran th- in last second. I think he was taking a shit. He walked by the Oval Office, if so, that's where this is. It looks I, ovular to me. I want to know more about the guy with the orange tie. No one wears an orange fucking tie. It's, <laughs> you, you, it, it's very clear that you wear red or blue ties. This guy's got a Halloween tie back there. Also, she only gets one thumb. All the guys got two thumbs. It's a shame that women only have one I, thumb actually, for every two thumbs a man women has. Women actually only get 70% of thumbs. Yeah. 
<laughs> women only get eight uh, oceans to every 11 oceans a man makes. Is that right? Yeah. Remember when the national conversation would have been about zero black people in the photo? Right. Like It would have been just a talking point. We, it's not that we don't notice it. It's that we know they're white nationalists. And, that, uh, like, and we've, we have bigger fish to fry now. We're like, yeah, well, they're racist. They haven't made any bones about that. So we're moving on. Like, like, because we're like, how do we get them out of there? Yeah. We're, not, like, we're no longer policing them and going like, it would be nice to see some diversity in that photo. We're like, hey, <laughs> is, there, is there anything in this photo that, that could show us their weakness? Also, has there ever been... Is a, there a kryptonite barrel in the corner? That, has there ever been a desk that big that didn't have a fucking book or a pen on it? Like, like he, he doesn't, it's a desk. He doesn't have any shit on it. That's not, like, like, yeah. He clearly doesn't want desks. He doesn't want to be at that desk. That's not a good desk. That's not the desk of someone who uses a desk. It's a good desk for finding the book of secrets if you, uh, as I said. Uh, but, but remember, remember Obama's first couple days in office? Was, was hey, Mike, keep it down, would you? <laughs> I was, thanks. <laughs> I remember when uh, every, one of the first things, because they, they, they have to, it was like, Obama with the Hitler mustaches. Oh, it's the end of the world. Obama's president. Oh, God, how can we, how will we live through two years of this, four years of this, eight years of this? It's a black man in the White House. We're all going to die. And the first thing was, look at him. He's not even wearing his jacket at the desk because the first photo was him with his shirt sleeves rolled up and he was on the phone, fucking papers everywhere, getting to work. And then somebody split screened it with Kennedy and it was, he was the same. It was like, yeah, I'm a civil servant. I fucked Marilyn Monroe, but I also, I want work to get done. All right, anyways, whatever. When did I become political? The did answer you, is uh, when we started dying. There was a great Twitter moment where somebody uh, posted this picture and said, uh, What's this mixtape called? <laughs> and then everybody was, was sending in answers. It was great. Mine was uh, Male White Marauders. <laughs> That's the name of this picture. Um, That's a hip-hop joke. I'm sorry. Let, uh, yeah, well, let's talk about the fact that, uh, uh, about hip-hop jokes and the, the, that we won't get. Uh, like, uh, I'm you, so full of those, yeah. We, we, we just met. Like, like, I didn't have time. I'm not going to pretend I'm like, oh, I'm a huge fan of Open Mike Eagle, but I liked what you were doing in the show that I met you in, and then I was like, after the show, like, you should come and do it at my show, but I know nothing about you. I, I know you're from Chicago. I know that you're, uh, like, like, like what, where did you, what was your upbringing like? Oh shit! Uh, it was fucked up. I lived like, like right by the projects, like not in them, but kind of like right by them and shit. Uh, and I went to elementary school that was like nestled within the projects. Uh, so I had I lived with my grandparents. My mom was fucked up, um, and yeah, I had to try to have like a normal childhood. Except that like they kept me very sheltered, and it was like gunshots and crack cocaine and all that. And you had uh, had uncles and aunts that were all strung out on shit. Um, but they kept me in the house, so like I just watched a shit ton of like fucking cable television in the late '80s and early '90s a lot. And Raised by your grandparents, yeah. Uh, and so, what was their take on the world around? Stay inside. Right. That was it. <laughs> Stay. Don't don't go outside. Did they have? Uh, as a white naive question, did they have a take that was? racially based like did they have a, did they have talks with you about what to do when the cops and blah 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 and what what other nah, black people do see, and my, what blah, blah, my blah. grandparents were black people what from the south <laughs> let me finish okay <laughs> um and what that meant is all of their talks were uh alarmingly racist <laughs> like an, but not in like a like not in a cute way like i had a japanese seventh grade teacher and the shit that my sweet old grandmother used to say about that man was fucking awful. You know, like she was a great person, but you know, I think she we'd was, all like to hear. I wouldn't, I wouldn't dare. So we can cluck our tongues I, I and wouldn't fucking also go, yeah, whoa. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's just an example. It would be great. So we know how to judge her. Yeah, she called, she called him a bunch of shit that uh, obviously was learned in World War II. Oh, so she yeah. would say like actual slurs. Yes. She wouldn't just use stereotypes like, how did she drive to, to no, teach you? No, it was, it was slur. Because she, she, you know, she, I don't know. It was just uh, part of the lexicon for her to say those awful, awful things. And, no, but how, and how did she feel about, because she's from a certain generation, like what was her and your grandpa's uh, like they're, it's like if they're looking at a Korean person, they might have all kinds of like comforting things to say about the other. But what was their feeling about how they fit into their government, their society? 
their neighborhood, whatever. You know, it was more like keep your nose to the ground and work. They they didn't have a lot of we didn't have a lot of talk about identity. Like my dad talked to me about a lot of that stuff. My grandparents they were they were working people and they worked and they wanted to make sure we were safe and did our homework and shit. They could care less about a lot of you know, a lot of social and racial identity and that kind of thing. We so they were just sort of like, were they Christian? Yeah. And so they were kind of like, just be a good person and, and go to church and like be like work hard and stay out of trouble. Yeah. Do your homework. Don't hit girls at school. Like, you know what I mean? Like just, just real straight down the middle shit, you know? And, and they, did you mainly adhere to that or were you a rebel in your youth? Nah, I wore uh, I wore corduroys and the sweaters that they brought me from Kmart with my grandmother worked. <laughs> so my rebelling would be uh, not wearing my shirt all the way up to the top. That was my that was my rebelling. And what were you interested in when you were like uh, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, like going through puberty? Like, what did you imagine? Were you scarred by the Japanese teacher you had? Did that did that fuck you up? No, I loved him. He was fantastic. <laughs> he was a, he was an amazing person. Mr. Matsumoto was fucking awesome. Matsumoto, it's like 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 yeah, easy to remember too. Yeah, man, he's good. I don't he know, made an impression like, on me. You could just start making up that name and find your way through it and still be right. <laughs> okay, all right. Look, I mean, maybe I'm on your grandma's side. Maybe the, <laughs> maybe I like to dehumanize. Maybe it's a, <laughs> maybe that and Christ are blankets I wrap around me at night, and maybe the world is, has no other options for me. Uh, no, but uh, what what when you were like like pick your age, ten, eleven, twelve, whatever. But like at a certain there's there's a point where where your future is like all be, you know like 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 what was the astronaut dream or the like i remember me Shit. and my best friend said we were going to we were going to get a boat and we were going to sail into the bermuda triangle and we were going to like just like find out what the deal was with the bermuda triangle and we were pinky swearing we we're like seriously though you know how old people get fat and old and then they don't want to do that and then we were like no for real i fucking we we're going to look you up and we're like like we set a date and i you know of course i fucked him over and <laughs> I mean, my, my personal dream like that was that I, I, I had romanticized being like in like the Secret Service or some shit, but really? only because, in my dumb mind, uh, the Secret Service guys were the guy, like somebody in the government knows everything, right. and it's got to be those guys. <laughs> they're the because, Secret Service, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they got to know they're, all the secrets. They're, they're, they're secret. not the ignorant yeah, service, yeah. exactly. <laughs> They have so, secret in their name. <laughs> so I wanted to do that. It turns out they're just in charge of counterfeiting and <laughs> and and protecting the president. I guess I don't know. No, they're in char- yeah. That 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 is an interesting answer. Like I'm I'm fascinated by the Secret Service too. Like I wonder like what 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 their definition of a good guy and a bad guy is. Like what you're supposed to do. Like like what if the president grabs a hammer and goes at himself with the claw end of it. Uh, how- What's what's your responsibility as a Secret Service? You have Service to like guy? jump between him and the hammer. Like you have to get in between. <laughs> Right. Hammer and him. Yeah. Wow. But what if the whole That's time really he's saying, "This is for the American people that I'm doing this"? There's a microchip in my head. Like, 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 are you supposed to, as a Secret Service guy, be like, "That's impossible"? You have. Or to, are you right? supposed to be like, "This is my boss"? I... Presidents have like fevers and shit too. Sometimes don't they wake up in cold sweat saying crazy shit all the time? Like, and the uh, Secret Service guy has to of... jump in front of that virus. He has to get right. <laughs> In front of that sneeze that uh, that gave him that cold. And the big question is, like, when they... I remember when Obama got elected, there was a kind of doubling up of uh, Secret Service efforts and things, which I, was, was simultaneously, like, it's kind of like, by the millennial definitions, it's like, oh, we're racist. We're noticing he's a black president, so let's let's close ranks, everybody. It's like, like if you drifted further into the outfield when he came up to bat. Same thing. Um, I, I, I have a friend from, from high school, and my friend Mike Carpio, who listens to the show, uh, he, uh, he drives a cab in New York right now. Uh, he sent a postcard jokingly saying to a friend that was going to Chicago when I think George Herbert Walker Bush was president, saying like, hey, hey you're going to be in Chicago. Don't, don't shoot the president while you're there. Ha ha. On a postcard. The next morning, knock on the door, two dudes in suits, Secret Service, and they gave him a hundred questions. And among the questions wow. were, "Are you homosexual? Are you a member of the Communist Party?" Like, like and they show, they had the postcard. So they haven't changed their question here from 1955. <laughs> no, same, yeah, same just question boilerplate. There. Like, yeah. still, still. Hey, well, well, should we cut down on some of these questions? Hey, what harm is there in knowing if someone's gay? <laughs> right. That was someone at the mor- meeting. They're like, "Hey, what do we? Yeah. What do we want to know less?" 
we'll wait for them to sue us, then we'll stop asking. Yeah. The noose doesn't loosen. Yeah, that we, was we, that sort of the... Yeah, we drove all the way to Whittier. We're not going to not know if they're gay or not. But, <laughs> but I am fascinated with that. The idea of what I was getting to is like, okay, so how, how, the Secret Service, how much does it get flushed and switched over for each president? Like, they have to have a... They must have a, uh, a professional code that supersedes. What, like, didn't didn't a guy just resign? Like the head of the Secret Service just resigned? I think so is that is that something I'm making up? Can't keep track. National <laughs> National Security, right? No, but a different guy. I think oh. the, the, specifically, I think the, the director of the Secret Service. Right, I think that was he said early for personal on. reasons. Yeah, yeah. I feel like what I'm doing is literally called upstaging you, like. Oh, Mike, by the way, uh, I just got to check. If you need to uh, hook into all your gear there, I have the DI. Uh, oh, that's right. I got to do the other the, thing. The DI right. box here. Do you, you need to go hook into this? I do. Because that, that's, that's your lead. There. How's everybody doing? That's good. Read any you good comic that? books? Cool. Now, what, uh, when, upstage, you, when you, get, when, when you get back on the uh, mic, Mike, I want to talk about all this gear you have here because you got loads of shit. I do. That's why you brought a stool. This tool is not just a power move. This is an actual functional tool. Yes, it's a thing used for sitting. <laughs> the reason why upstaging is a bad thing is because you, you stay back and you make the other person go like this. You're fucking them over if you h- hug the back wall. I learned that in Trauma Club. Aw. Yeah. Upstaging. Uh, all, right, all right, so... Uh, uh, yeah, but I don't know. I was just okay. I, we don't have. We, we could. That was a graceful segue, and I want to ruin it because I still want to talk about the Secret Service. Because I, I just imagine being a Secret Service person. I'm like, well, okay. So then the guy comes in office. That's like, what if you're? What if you're? I mean, what if your wife is Muslim? What if you? What if you? Like, like, like. It's like, what? What do they do? What? What a Secret Service guy? We'll do. We'll have a Secret Service guy as a guest, and uh, we'll ask him all kinds of questions. Or her. You're welcome. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, let's get let's get into the uh, rapping portion of our show, which okay. should last for now until nine, uh, ninety minutes from now. <laughs> so, so how do we want to do this? I got I got a bunch of shit that can be done. It's just what do we want to do? Let's just let's just let's just have an open source process. Start by giving me a beat. Giving you a beat. All right, let's see. How did you guys meet while while, while Mike's putting this together? You guys did what show? It's funny we re- we are uh, we were both uh, I was a rogue cop, <laughs> and then I had to say hello to my new partner. <laughs> no, we, we 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 just did this show. Uh, I, <laughs> are, are you making beats on the on the fly right now? No, I'm just gonna. I got something to set up. I think. But... Now, are you going to lay down some stuff that you already ri- uh, have written, or are you going to freestyle for us? Uh, I don't know. Well, I don't so have I anything guess... written to this. You don't have anything written to this? Not to this, no. I do. <laughs> well, when you rap, you rap with your heart. You do your best to do your rapping parts because rap music is never going anywhere it's in all of the water the fire the wind and your hair mislead well i'm a rapping man and i'm here to sing I want to rap about everything, but I can't. Not yet till I get a harmony in my heart. I want to do my part. So I bought a gun for some reason. The president's committing treason. (laughs) Just by sitting in that office, I hear him cough his... And I think, is he going to die? And then I wonder why I'd be happy for somebody to be in pain. I'm on the hate train. My name is motherfucking MC. I'm going to put every vitamin inside of my pee. I'm going to drink it down and pee it out. Because that's what a recycling syndrome's about. 
If you're only drinking pee, then water is pee. And if you pee it out, it's twice as much pee, you see. So you gotta seek effervescent freshness. You gotta get back to what the quest was. You can pee in Texas, and you can pee on extras. Uh, and if you can't pee long, you should stretch it out, like I do. Cause I got a really small bladder, so I pee longer than I have to in the bathroom. I let people think I'm still going when I'm flowing, even though nothing is showing. <laughs> Fuck it. Oh, shit. <laughs> well, now what do we do? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> That's the danger of rapping when you also are in control of how long the beats go. Yeah. yeah. It's also the danger of rapping that early in the show. I mean, how are we going to follow that with our bullshit? Uh, Dan, you, 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 Dan you, you just dropped $4. I guess with cash prices. Hello. That's like in video games when you beat someone up and they drop money. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I want to hear more, just more, like, you know. Rapping? More rapping. <laughs> <laughs> more extemporaneous uh, freestyling. That was a nice beat. I had a good. That was good. All right. So so these are all beats that you made up yourself? That one was. uh, A lot of this is other people's shit from my songs. And what should I put on here? What should we call that last rap? Uh, Uh, Well, doing the rapping part. (laughs) Oh, yeah. That That hook was great. That was great. What, what, is there any significance to the name Open Mike Eagle? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. he, he sounds a little bummed out about that. I, I pressed the opposite of a button. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I found the armchair snooze <laughs> setting. Like I, I bored you to death. No, it's not boredom. It's just that I should have a way better answer. And the truth is, my government name is Michael Eagle. Oh, okay. That's it. <laughs> it's fucking Mike Eagle. And a rapper bunch at open mics. And so then I just smashed all that shit together. But you, you didn't and made feel a rap like, name. You didn't feel like Mike Eagle wasn't cool enough? You know what? <laughs> that's, re- that's, the, like, that's the best name in the world. In retrospect, you're correct. <laughs> It would be the thing to do now, like if you started yeah. now instead of 2003 or whatever Dan, you started. Dan, I think about it every day. Yeah. <laughs> but you could but also, also if you call yourself Mike Eagle, pe- people will think you made that up. When you say my name is Open Mike Eagle, they go, oh, his name is Mike Eagle, and he's ashamed of it. Yeah. I, I, he doesn't believe that that's enough. I, I didn't. I was overcompensating and got stuck in it forever. <laughs> uh, but you could be like John Cougar Mellencamp and just drop the cougar at some point. You did he be, drop it? I don't know what the arc was with that shit at all. Because he was Johnny Cougar for a while. Oh. Then he was John Cougar Mellencamp, but I think he just went to John Mellencamp. That was a great decision. Yeah. I'm going to draw upon his strength. Because the cougar was thrust upon him, but Eagle, you were born with the Eagle. I was. Yeah, so you can't, get, you can't escape what your destiny. I mean, I like it. I just didn't realize it was enough. <laughs> Mike Eagle. I kind of feel like... You, you, know, you, you know what it is? It's my dad's name, too. Right. And so I never thought it was fucking special. Oh, so you Mike Eagle, Mike Eagle Jr.? The second or whatever yeah, the fuck, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's fucked up. Because yeah. Mike, Mike Eagle, like, you have to either be like a, a, a de- 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 like film noir detective or a stripper. Because Mike Eagle is good. That's yep. a great name. I feel like I'm in between I would read the, the Mike, Mike Eagle novels. What? No, I was saying, like, you, you could write a series of detective novels oh, as Mike right. Eagle. Like Sam Spade and fucking Dashiell Hammett. I think, I think if he were to be a detective, I it think would it would go, go something, something like, like this. Like this. <laughs> Put a beat on Shit. before you get peed on. I should, whoa! Beats and pee, goddammit. That's, <laughs> that's the name of this segment. Oh, no. I like this one a lot. Stakes are high, Dan. Just giving like a it's a Why do you hold it? I don't know. This is no. This is a sample from They Might Be Giants, by the way. Oh, yeah. The last one was, too. Down, down, down you go. No, 
this one no i think no. he does he's, no, i like it too much i'm sorry i was just listening <laughs> you, you put you put him to sleep like a shark upside down yeah yeah you ever see you no. like it's a, how about it a gibberish i'm talking gibberish when i i rap this fast i gotta no. talk gibberish because i can't rap this fast and speak english because i'm rapping too fast to no. speak real words i fucked your mama like i was watching birds took my binoculars and no. saw both titties i fucked your mama coast to coast in both cities went to new york and manhattan Staten Island, fuck your mama so hard she turned into my, a guy named Ryland. It's a, 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 like a nephew of my girlfriend. It's a real name. Is your name Ryan or Ryland? Is it Ryland with a D or Ryland? It confuses people. Choose better names for your children. If it's Stephanie, spell it S-T-E-P-H-A-N-I-E. That's how we know how to spell it. If you fuck with that, you're going to doom your kid to a life of correcting people. Listen to this morning. But if you name your kid Wubbajoo, spell it how? Wubbajoo. How you want to spell it, Wubbajoo. You're an inventor. You're Thomas Edison. I fucked your mama so hard, uh, let us in to the kitchen like a vampire. I fucked your mama till I changed your pussy's tire. I jacked it up. I I put it down. I changed the lug nuts and drove her ass around. I treated her with respect. (laughs) Then the car wrecked. Took it back to Avis. Said, I don't know what happened. (laughs) Take it, Mike. Yeah. I know what happened. That's a lot to unpack. That's, yes. <laughs> There's condoms in the back seats. Why? I don't know. I had acne. Uh, he fucked my mother like some type of athlete. Or my mom? Why did I personalize it? I don't know. I don't have to. It could be your mom or your mom. It could be somebody's mom in Vietnam. Anywhere. There's nothing stopping this man from fucking anybody's mother. And this is the truth I have finally discovered right now. But he fucked all of our mothers, so that means all of us are sisters and brothers. Um, He is a man of many lovers. As he has said, as he repeated, and as he said, he excreted all over nasty back seats, and then he returned the car like nothing happened. And it was full of used prophylactics. I'm like, dude, that's disgusting. Look at the semen you've erupted. It's like all over the upholstery. What is this supposed to be? (laughs) And he still had to pay full price plus a cleaning fee. Because the people were like, we're not cleaning semen or cleaning pee. Because it's all about his liquids. Because I'm ubiquitous yes. with my liquidus. Yes. I'm going to evict this administrativeness from the oval of of this coffinus. I want to put it in the sarcophagus. I got the pillars. I got the house. I want to creep in there like a tiny mouse. I got superpowers going to shrink my ass down, going to go to the oval office and go to ground round. It's a restaurant chain in the Midwest. <laughs> In the Midwest, we kick fresh. Not fucking with incest, they small like insects, hide them like witsack, witness. Protection, that's how we do it. Strangled in here in any section. Thin like the midsection, maybe torso. Fingers get in their head like cornrows for twisted. Just watch how we blow like ballistic missiles. Cause the shit's wild, not in exile. Put flows together like textiles. Smile for miles, never stopping. I'm tech popper with the news in prime time. But light shine ain't the one to stand for the tenth time. Break it down like enzymes when I get within rhymes. There's no 
space to be left between so come back have them dancing like Ben Vereen in they system got them hook addicted nicotine they get small figurine I'm coming through pretty big pigs wanna get shut down when I clown and they don't understand this is that new smackdown referee doing fast counts one two three they can't move me MCs they think I'm in the Fuji's but I'm watching show them double features in the movie but it's all this it's all that we all fat not hit them with a ball bat it's false start they Walmart they generic we just declare it we stare at them they get embarrassed when we share this freestyle How the fuck do you do that <laughs> baby I don't know I how don't I know do how that I do. how the fuck how the fuck <laughs> how the fuck do you do that I don't know how I do that I don't know do you eat something special when you're growing up is there a tree in your backyard that grows a special fruit? <laughs> Did you win an eBay auction that gave you a special lamp that you rubbed like a rapping genie? <laughs> oh, what a meanie. Who passed, passed away? He did pass away. Uh, I rap on a Saturday or Sunday. I move the crowd like feng shui. When people rig a maze of furniture. Yeah, I rap, but it's earlier. I will miss you earlier. That means I look through your window. I'll make you sick, enlarge your fucking lymph nodes. Like I was cancerous. MCs want to get pressed up like beats on the master disc. Next to their name, like Barry Bonds with an asterisk. After he hit the home run, I am the showgun. There's no one I kill them like Africans with a blowgun when they're trying to do what they do because they're predators open cut your words up like a newspaper editor with op-ed I'm not drop dead Fred that old school movie from the 80s MCs will try to slay me but they can't do nothing because they feel smart as a baby but yo they got babies and they think they sick they want to come through and do shit but they just miss how we do it how we do it hello hi yeah yeah yeah. I, yeah. Jesus Christ. I'm just sitting over here checking you out because you run upholstery with supposed to be. That made me very happy. Uh, incredible. Fuck it. Vincent oh, Price. Vin, oh, Vin, right. Vincent uh, Price breakdown. Right. Uh, there's a, like a, there's a, me doing the Vincent Price bridge in a, like, um, yes. Uh, your upholstery is scintillating creepy mm, the seat coverings are smotherings from the spider's delight oh shit ice tea's here too mm. yo they ain't personal it's just business wanna <laughs> fuck your mother what is this I wanna see her pussy to her mouth I fucked your mama from the north to the south, south. it ain't personal it's just me I put a bullet a in my pee. I peed out the bullet like a gun. You telling me this motherfucker's done? Uh-uh. I'm iced tea to the I to the C to the E and every T. And it rhymes. Everything rhymes with T. That's all me. Ice tea. Yeah. Yo. I gotta go. I'm gonna get an ice cream. So don't confuse that with what my name means. My name comes from the streets. Yo, my sore feet, they get sore when I walk. I fucked your mama. Oh shit, is, is, Jimmy Stewart's here too. Uh, I saw your mama was outside. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, obviously I need a B. Oh yeah, well that, that, was, that was kind of a smooth one. I like that. It wasn't no drums in it though. No. Uh, yeah, so that wasn't gonna work. We can take a break and talk about uh, you again. Okay. <laughs> now, now that there's heightened interest in you, is there? <laughs> is that what happened? I saw some skills. I think or like, yeah. Uh, uh, like, like, like. Uh, so, so, so. Now we're at the point in your life you're being raised by your grandparents. Oh shit. Okay. Oh what? What? No, I forgot that we were talking about oh, the past. Yeah. Uh, like, there's a point. So where are you? You're not like a six-year-old on the playground that's into hip-hop, are you? No, I was into... I mean, this is the thing. 
like where I grew up and when I grew up, rap was just there. Like rap was there. Like my older sister, my, my first rap I heard, I got in my mom's car and she was playing fucking Easy E's first album. It was fucking 1987. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? That's when I was the suspense was making me sick. So I opened her up and the bitch had a dick. I heard that in my mom's car when I was six. And I was like, oh my God, all these curse words. This is fucking great. But that's that was just what was all around me. So like I never I mean, at least at that point in my life, I wasn't like, oh, God, rap is awesome, because it was just life. And so I actually escaped into, like, rock music and shit that I was seeing on MTV. Did you associate rap at that age? You were kind of like, this is gr-, like almost like maybe what I associated with country western with. It was like, this is my parents' music. This is grown-up shit. This is like, so did you reject it, kind of? Is what it you're wasn't saying? so much that I rejected it. It was just like the soundtrack of yeah. my surroundings. What was, the, what was the first record or, or rap group that you got into? Like, was that your own discovery of the, your, your own shit? Tribe Called Quest. Oh, yeah. yeah. So all of that shit. Like, all of the De La Soul, Tribe Called Quest, the oh brand Nubian. I, 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 like, I, was, I was really bummed out when Fife died. Man. Yeah, man. I didn't realize until I read an article at De La Soul because I was always like, what? why wasn't De La Soul's fire? Why didn't it burn everything down? And and, and, and it was like, there was, a, there was sampling legislation that happened that I I had no idea had anything to do with it. Yeah. But that, that a lot of their sound was like very, very... And they were part of the original lawsuits that changed hip-hop forever. Yeah. Like, they had they were sampling like the Turtles in just interludes and shit. But there, was, there were no standing laws or no history for how you go about uh, dam- uh, punishing that. And so the copyright law for hip-hop started with them and started with Bismarck E. And then it became... Like illegal to the point where these the record labels and the guys who own those masters could sue for the amount of money that would just kill a whole project. It could kill a whole label. It could put everybody in a bankruptcy, and it changed hip hop forever. That's why hip hop can't sound like it used to. Like the the records that I grew up loving are all illegal right now. You can't make any of those. Do you think that when we go to music in general? Even it, it, like maybe our grandparents went to Elvis for the same reason, or Little Richard, or whatever. Like, are we going to music when we're in the mood to fuck or fight, and that's why conscientious music, like a message in your music, like it's gonna never like win that stock market battle where it's like, hey, over here, I got, I'm selling Arrested Development. Like I thought, like in the '90s, I was like. Like it, it, it seems so much harder and so much more worthwhile to try to rise above the the equally charismatic stuff like that easy e thing you're talking about. I remember the the white guys in the locker room, just like everyone knew it by by like syllable, like everyone had it memorized, and it was it had infected everybody. I guess because it was just for the same reason that who yeah, who knows like 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 what the I'm doing the twist or whatever the fuck like like the, like it's always been a, it's the same as rock and roll. It's like oh they're talking about fucking and they're talking about anger and they're talking about something my parents don't like and this is finally authentic and it's been too inauthentic and now it's authentic. But the problem is that that authenticity never goes hand in hand with like. Is, is this a question, Dan? Is what you're wondering? No, no, no. Uh, I, no, I, I think I, it makes perfect sense. Authenticity doesn't go hand in hand with like, oh, here's an idea. <laughs> authenticity tends to go hand in hand with, I want to smash someone in the face. Uh, I shot someone today. I'm horny. Uh, I mean, you know what? What it is with hip hop, and I and I don't know if this. Speaks I think it to is with rock genres. and roll too, but it sticks but out more with hip hop. I know that when I grew up, when hip hop was starting, there were hella options in terms of the type. Of content you could get in a popular rap song, even not upstaging him getting a drink. It's all good. Uh, you could have uh, N.W.A. and you can have Public Enemy, and all of that was able to exist in the same space. What I think happened with rap music is that ultimately, the rap music that aligns more with like our overarching cultural values, it becomes easier for that to spread than things that are talking about going against that. Do you think part of it is because if guys are rapping about being poor and how they'll always be poor and how being poor makes them angry and how they, they, and the, 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 the kind of uh, lower class lifestyle being maybe not necessarily applauded by the, the protagonist in the music, but certainly being coped with, being celebrated, do you think that maybe part of it is because that's a, uh, 
that's easy to digest for everybody, including people who can stay racist and like good music. Right, and, and but, but what I'm saying specifically about rap music, like, because if you look at, like, uh, Dr. Dre's The Chronic album, and that album changed, like, everything, because it was one of the first times where uh, a high-profile rap release was overtly about, like, fucking and money and, like you said, shit that people could identify with, no matter if they liked or identified with the people making it or not. Right. They could identify with those values. Like, those are cultural values overall. Right. And I feel like once people were able to dial into that, then that shows the, the mode of hip-hop that was able to become more dominant. Right. You know, because it it's cuts across. That's what we're talking about. Two di- well, there's two different areas here, and I'm because I'm, well, it's like <coughs> the thing that I always hear over and over about that, that, that historical era of hip-hop was like, oh, well, the white people flooded in. Like, like, like the suburban white kids that don't, it's not identifiable, but it's still charismatic. Well, the, was, the, the music was good because, like, I make, like, I was a suburban, I, I still am a suburban white kid. Uh, like, EPMD, Eric B and Rakim, NWA, um, Too Short, like, all, all like, the, the, the West Coast stuff. Like, we all listened to it because the music was good. Like, the quality was really good. The production values were really good. And, and their records, um, were actual albums like like the whole record said uh, said something, it wasn't just a bunch of bullshit, and rock and roll wasn't doing it then. Like the rock and roll had kind of gone away. So we rejoin Open Mike Eagles biopic. Uh, you you you're hearing Tribe Called Quest the first time. So and 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 we're still as far as I know because I want to hear the point where you actually are seduced by hip hop. Okay, that's high school for me because. I first identify with like Tribe Called Quest, Benita Applebaum, like, and I'm seeing <laughs> images of people of like black people who like are cool, but they're not like I'm trying to be hard cool. Yeah. They're like I'm. It's okay for me to be unique. It's okay for me to rock these weird Afrocentric baggy, and I, and I wasn't able to do that either. But I saw like self confident people who weren't, like, trying to portray, like, the hardest image. Mm -hmm. And to me, that created a space. Like, oh, wait a minute. There's room for me in this culture, too, because I wasn't reflecting those other values either. So that was the first thing. And then uh, in Chicago on the south side in high school, um, there was this place called Promontory Point. Uh, It was this park district where they had this, like, city-sanctioned breakdancing class. Um, But what the hip-hop community in this city used this as this meeting point for people who were into all of the hip hop arts. So people who were doing graffiti, people who were freestyle rapping, people who were break dancing, people who were DJing. They all got together at this place every Tuesday and Thursday afternoon. And like that just flicked something in my head. Like, oh, wait a minute. Like this is not just some shit to listen to. It's some shit you can actually do. Right. And like taking that layer of distance away from it and making it something that I had an entry or access point into. Maybe, maybe intellectualizing it. Maybe, but not to that. That sounds punitive to you, but like, I like, like that's how I experience emotion. <laughs> so I, I need to, I need to logically realize that it's the right thing to do. That mm-hmm. it, that it makes sense to do it. That it's strategically. That it, that it, that it doesn't compromise me. That right. it doesn't take anything away from me. That it's a proper way for me to. It's like, oh, hugging my girlfriend is a way to maintain that. Uh, like. I'm just wondering maybe if you're, you know, if you're a verbal thinker, if you're a logical thinker, you, you grow up in that atmosphere and you're like, then in that moment, you're like, wait a minute. And if I could speculate going like, cause something that I had to like back then, I remember going like somebody had to tell me, or I read it somewhere. They were like, no, don't you understand that, uh, that, that, that going like this with a record in the eighties is, is like the only recourse We've provided kids that used to get tuba lessons, right? Exactly. Um, and, and, and that and that all of the sampling and all and everything, beatboxing, rapping itself, everything, all of it is, it's an expression of it's like banging on pipes right. underneath a fucking subterranean, uh, not underneath a subterranean thing. That would that, that, <laughs> don't don't let me do this. Um, <laughs> It's, 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 that, that, and then I, I was like, oh shit, like I had to have a logical, I kind of have to parse it in sci fi terms myself. I'm always like, oh wait, okay, <laughs> this is the robots and these are the people and this is how we fight and this is what we do. And maybe that happened to you kind of in that moment where you're like, wait a minute, what do, what do all these things have in common? They're 
they're unsanctioned. Right. They're not. What was the threshold for you, Mike, when uh, you listened to stuff, you got turned on by that music, and then you started saying, okay, now I have to go get equipment and start making it myself. Like, like how well, old I were sta- you? And- I started rapping just at 16, right? So, and, and I was seeing people rap at, at, at that place, freestyling. They were getting in circles and freestyle rhyming. And, and so, like, me and my friends in high school decided we were going to do that. And so... From like the age of sixteen to like twenty four, all, all the rap I ever did was freestyle. So that's why you're better. I started at forty two. Well, then yeah, <laughs> ten thousand hours. You know that's what I mean? That, that's it's not like, true, Dan. You've been doing it since you were twenty, and you've been bad at it the whole time. I started taking it seriously last week. Okay. <laughs> right. uh, wait, wait, can, can, Mike, can you give Dan some pointers? Because t- tell him to stop saying the word mouth, because he knows he's just going to have to say south after that. But then like, you, like, there's, you there's, keep certain, going, there's certain though. pitfalls that you fall into every you time. Did, do you, you rap a lot for real? I in the show, yeah, I do. Okay, and and I truly in the show, I'm like, I'm, I, like, like because it's been a, it started as a gimmick in the show. The idea was I rap badly. I only by virtue of doing this show every week for years, I'm getting a little bit better. Yeah. Don't tell anyone I said no, that. No, you're, you're I, I'm not, not but, terrible. But, but, like, like, you're, it's just know, practicing. Like, it's like right. light training. And that's you, all you, it is. You, you have your moments, Dan. All it is. Once in a while, Dan will lay down a really good rhyme. Like, like he'll, he'll and actually. And, but and, well, that's the thing. It's like it's a, that's the thing that fascinates me about rap because unlike piano lessons, which I regret, like ever bailing on and stuff but here's this thing where it's like you talk there's people who labor you, you, you it's like you're like people the, the, the relationship between freestyle and writing raps is just really fra- fa- fascinating to me um it, it deep core fracks the fascination <laughs> i'm not drunk i'm just making up new words like it's, shakespeare also it's 9 11 uh don't let that alarm you that's it oh, was a little scary yeah uh, it's a little scary <laughs> Uh, for the uninitiated, well, but, let me remind you, that's no, no, still scary. Just so you know, our fans are crazy people. Okay. They're crazy. Well, here's the thing you did just before you launched into your most, when we were doing it before. I was like babbling and I, had doing, I was doing bits and I'm like, oh, I'm blah, blah, blah. And then like, it was literally, I watched you, like, I said like, sassafras. And then you were like, I'm going to start rapping. I saw that on your face. And then I, because I, I was just like, and by sassafras, I mean pineapple. And you're like pineapple, apple, babble, but like you, yeah. you did, you could have gotten away with. And by got, I mean, in your head, you, you had the option of going with sassafras as a point of departure, but you were committed to a last dragon like flow. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, that's that's all it is. You know, it's it's just making connections. You know, but in real time, that's all it is. Is making like in. And, and the enemy is starting to think. No, the the enemy is stopping. That's the only enemy is stopping. You just keep going. Just like when me and my friends first started, but we I were didn't all hear fucking you. horrible. Okay. And what we used to do, we would get on the phone and call each other old school three way, right? <laughs> With no beat, and we would just start rapping. We were fucking awful, and we and our whole thing was just don't fucking stop, you right. know. And then like. What you start to do after a while is build that catalog of words. So then it's not mouth and south. It's about and trout and right. route and gout and, 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 and the all rhyme, of that. The rhymes like, don't have to be actual complete rhymes. There can be sounds. You, you, it's, it's, you're just riffing on sounds. Yeah, so you the, don't even have to rhyme. Yeah, exactly. You just got to keep going. Some of the best lyrics in music history, uh, there are no rhymes. Right. Like, there, there's a song called uh, Moonlight in Vermont, which is a beautiful lyric, and there's no rhyme in it. And you, you don't notice that. It's just a great, it's a, it's a beautiful lyric. It's a poem. Somebody you requested sing it. <laughs> I, I can't w- sing it. We'll get sued. I was in, uh, I did this study with the National Institutes of Health. I freestyled in an MRI machine. What? Yeah. I did. And like, it, and they, and, and we, I'm a co author on a fucking National Institute of Health study about wait, wait, uh, sorry. improvisational freestyling. You, you got an MRI while you were freestyling? Yeah, yeah no, like, I, uh, they bloated uh, me I, in the machine. Can, can I make a guess? I'll probably be wrong, but I, I, I would guess because words appear as for me, uh, they're, they're visual. Mm-hmm. Does, does, does the same part of like facial recognition, like 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 spatial recognition, come up? Like what, what part of your brain lit up in the MRI? Well, they said okay, so they've been studying this because they started with studying like uh, improvisational pianists in there. So they had this little keyboard you can put in there. Um, <laughs> so like they're they're trying to uh, figure out the brain parts that are active when people reach what's called the flow state. And that's any improvisation. This is not my lead with this. I mean, like, go, go, keep going, keep going. But, um, 
Uh, it's and so what they say is like language turns on, but like forethought, like the normal frontal lobe thought turns off, and you start thinking with like more reptilian brain because you don't you like because you, you can't overthink it, like you said. But you know you're still I mean? using language. It's like your reptile brain is shooting lightning through the forebrain, but the forebrain's being used as a fucking silencer and a pistol or yeah. any other tool. It's like a it's like it's, it's it turned like man I. Unfortunately, the results were filled with jargon that I didn't understand <laughs> at all. Uh, on your part, you mean in your raps, where you're like, "I'm in an MRI and I got a dick in my eye." And how, I was, uh, how do you not rap about <laughs> being in the MRI machine? At least for the it's first hard, ten it's minutes. It's hard to rhyme medulla oblongata. You know. <laughs> I feel my optic nerve heating up. I feel my frontal lobe cooling down. <laughs> all right. And you're like, I'm trying too hard. Pull me out. Pull me out. All right, no, but but what what part of the brain is active when you're in the flow state? <sighs> like that's the thing. It's a combination of lobes, and I and I'll have to like I'd have to like send you the shit because like the front part turns off and a couple of like parietal temporal turn on. Like it's it's it was a complicated thing that they were showing happens. They put like chess players like that like chess masters un, under uh, CAT scans or MRIs, and the they showed them images of chess boards, like, like <laughs> of a game, like in uh, like middle game or end game or early game, like like openings and stuff like that. And the same part of their brain lit up that is the same part of your brain that lights up when you see a face that you mm. recognize. And you go, oh, that's Dan Harmon. Oh, that's Mike. Oh, that's Spencer. Um, they see chess boards as people. So uh, we, and, we should and so, all be spending a lot more time in MRI machines. Like, like, <laughs> like, like, this technology is important. Like, we should all just be spending like six hours a day in MRI machines and pooling the results. They get a lot of money to Have put you, shit in MRI machines to see what like, happens. Like Dan, you were saying that you got better. Like, you, you've been getting better at at being in the flow state, rapping over it time is, because yeah, because you, you can actually rewire the synapses to create. Well, uh, n- new new flow. Well, that's what I think is interesting. It's like, well, because remember this the the Ken Kesey metaphor that you told me about. Like, uh, did you ever read Electric Kool Aid Acid I mean, Test? I, I never Ken, read it, but Ken I don't Kesey, know. Uh, he had this metaphor that that uh, for being in the moment, which was like, which is the same thing you're talking about. This flow state. His metaphor was that you walk up to a player piano with the roll going, and that you, of course, if you didn't know how to play piano, you'd be like, you could try to play this weird game where you tried to like Im- imitate the keys and this is also in Westworld's title sequence uh, <laughs> uh, but 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 that you that that Ken Kesey had this like concept of if you take enough acid <laughs> or or if you get enough in the moment um, your fingers fall into those your, your fingers will start to get so fast because you because what's stopping you is thinking about right. observing the keys and blah 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 and then but then but then the the further philosophical concept was that you could you could get into that state so much that you could finish the song and then look up and see that the player role had didn't have the end of the song on it that you had known the song itself um, so it's the same thing and Olympic athletes say essentially the same thing mm-hmm. like like because people want to know for very good reasons how the fuck did you jump that high I mean but isn't isn't it similar with writing too though because like of I'm course, like most people I'd like to think so right most people can't most people can't like consciously remember like the mind state they were in when they wrote their best shit or had their best ideas. Like kind of you just you, you're in the moment so much yeah. that you kind of separate from it. Even when I have an amazing show like this one, I'm in a total blackout. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I'll find out later that we won a podcasty. Um, uh, no, but it, 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 yeah, it's it's and that's what, that that that's what's interesting to note is that it practicing shit. It so often has to do with actually. You have to learn some shit, but then it's like you gotta un- unlearn. You gotta it. unlearn yeah. thinking about it. Whatever. Well, they say that like uh, like like learning a craft, like learning piano. Um, if, if if there's genius inside you, the, the craft will liberate the genius. So working on something, like working on rhyming, working on music, working on writing, um, the the hard work that it takes uh, will liberate the the genius inside you that was always there. Well, can we try an exercise? Let's just go back and forth, like dueling banjo style. Okay. You can just like, you're teaching me to drive. You just do a little bit, like what's the definite, what's a good like short attention span? You do like a couple of, you do a little bit and then I'll do a little bit and then you do a little bit. We're we going, we going yeah. beat yeah. or are we going uh, acapella? 
Oh, uh, should we go a cappella? I mean, Maybe we the... can. Just you know, right. I, I, it's up I, to you. I, I say put put a real simple beat on. I I, I got one of them, but you, you, yours are going to be better, I'm sure. You got what you got? Well, as a, a Harry a, Harry Foster, he he gave us some beats. You want you want to try one of his? Uh, yeah. Or, or, then we'd have to but, but, switch but, but, the no, deal. Yeah, yeah, no, you you do yours because you 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 get you have your finger on the knob a little better over there. Let's see. Yeah, but yeah, do, do a little Harlem Globetrotters uh, pass it back. Red leather, yellow leather, <laughs> hip hop <laughs> to the hey, hippity Dan, hop. Dan, can I give you some improv advice? Overthink it. That's so good. Have you just came up with that right now? <laughs> look, 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 see, look, look, Mike. He's already, he's already freaking out. What the hell is this? Is this a no, I'm losing it. Look at me. I'm like the air. <laughs> I am the sun. I'm the earth. Um. Shit, I don't know what I got. Yo. Yo. I'm not even saying yo because I'm not thinking about it. I yo. like this one. Oh, whoa. Wow. Well, <laughs> water, ocean, waves, sky. F- fucked your mama. It came in her eye. Okay, see ya. See, now why does it always have to be fucking somebody's mama? I don't know because I think about that because it's edible. <laughs> okay, but look, but look, but look, but look. Uh, uh, I'll stop you right there. Because you're doing something that a lot of rappers, freestyle rappers do. It's Thank called, you. It's called having a crutch. Oh. But oh. like, <laughs> but like, no, no, no. That's not, that wasn't meant to deflate. Um, <laughs> like mine used to be, when I first started, mine used to be when I'm on the mic. Ah. Right? <laughs> It'd be like, my name's Mike Eagle. When up on the mic, I say hi to people. Like, you know what I mean? Like, every, <laughs> Eagle with every fucking bar was that. And, but, <laughs> but that's some people do, and yours happens to be fucking your Second mama. verse, same as the first. A little bit louder. A little well, my name's Chef Davis, yeah. I'm here to say. All right, well, what, so, what, so, so how do you deal with crutches? Did you, well, the, did you, you take just, a hacksaw to them? Yeah, you become conscious of them, and you just try not to. But it's there for a reason, because... We do that to help us get help us fill the time between what we said and where okay, we have okay, to get okay. to. So, so like my therapist would say, a th- uh, uh, <laughs> when she would say, so when she, she takes me through meditation, she says, a thousand times your mind will wander, a thousand times it can come back. Bring it back. In other yep. words, so if I say "fuck your mama," you guys don't start like booing and throwing chairs. <laughs> it's it's a, it's my mind. Like, I got back into the old habit. But and you note it, and you, right. s- you become increasingly aware of the crutch. Because what you'll do, you'll just find other ways to get to where you have to get with the timing, and you just won't say that particular thing every time. All right. Yeah. By the year 2017, it's now. <laughs> I'm not gonna fuck anyone's mama in a rap. Uh, rapping. Ah, uh, rapping. It's that easy, people. Oh, it's that ha, easy. Ha, ha, salt, pepper, fork, spoon. Oh, the, the sun and the moon. I got a, a solar system that's going round and round. I got my voice in my brain, and the brain is the sound. I got to flow through the rap. I got to flow through the people. Here's the motherfucking church, and I don't go to the steeple because I go to the altar, and I pray to God. I drop down to my knees, and I let them through my body. I want to get down with you to the break of dawn. Go, Mike. Go, Mike. Hey, he didn't fuck one mother in that at all. <laughs> no mothers were fucked in the, in the course of that rap. Yeah, 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 yeah. No mothers was fucked. And no uppercuts. We make bread like the company butternut with the squats. How we do it when we wash them seeds. They think they're old when they come through getting washed. And yeah, gotta stop and take it back. That's how we do it, because the flow's never whack. But how we do it, that's another crutch. And you can go back to that one and try not to say it so much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, much is so much. You don't do much, and you don't do such. If you don't do what you're supposed to do, then you do what you're going to do. If you don't do what you're going to do, you do what you've always done. I'm going to have fun and run in the sun. I'm going to be on the beach and make another one of my buns by cooking it in an oven and... I'm putting in the shoving with my dick and I'm a, okay. Right. Yeah, you put your dick in the muffin if you want to. Fuck the bread impromptu. Yeah, that's how you gotta do it. That's how we do it when we make it the new music. It's translucent. See through your own brain patterns from here to Saturn. It doesn't matter. 
We can scatter just like scattergories, and then you can listen to this new rapping story. What? Whoa, rapping, still like a table. If you put your mama, it's a, it's a fucking what? What's going on? All right, all right. What? Take it what? easy. Go with the flow. You're gonna laugh at some things. I'm gonna go high and low. I'm not thinking about what I'm saying anymore. I'm gonna, I'm praying for what I want to go through the door. I want God to come in and light us up. I want to suck the devil's dick and spit it up into the devil's face until he comes from his eyes. I want to give you all a spiritual surprise. I want to go up to heaven and pray to God. I'm going to say, everybody come down and General Zod's going to fight Superman, but he can't win. It doesn't matter who he brings. Superman's going to win. He's going to shoot him with his laser eyes. Christopher Reeves died. We didn't want him to. We didn't want him to. Oh, yeah. That was a breakthrough. That was a breakthrough for us. That was great. That was fucking, yeah. I wanted Spencer to rap. Spencer's not going to rap at all? I'm not, yeah, Mike, I'm you, not you, good you, at you, it. you gave Dan, like, a, like, you gave him freedom to, like, free fall a bit. Yeah, man. Yeah, like he, 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 there's that feeling of a, a, abandon there. That's right. Yeah, I feel like you need to come back every week so I can have therapy sessions like that. Like, I'll come back, like, two weeks. Okay. <laughs> All right, good. <laughs> All right. Well, we have technically a half hour left until we, the show ends when we usually end it. <clears throat> we usually end it with a rap. <laughs> <laughs> well, well uh, let, let me... I do actually perform rap songs professionally. Yeah, so if well, I could do... Well, this would be a good time for a musical guest. All right. You, like you. <laughs> I'm here. Open mic eagle. How much should I do? Should I just do... do I'll do very much money. That's a great call. I was going to do that anyway. Does it make you nervous for me to be sitting here, or should I go off stage? No, no, no. This is fine. This is actually a very loving environment we've created, and, and I really fucking appreciate it, man. Yo, yo. Oh, oh sorry, sorry. Restaurant crown on my hip like Simon Patrick of Thought of a song called Thinking the Master Plans Thinking the Rock and Drinking in Amsterdam Cafe back room Meeting with Cancer Man Engineering project like Astronaut The first scene in the film for me Because I wrote a brand new story That starts from there Just need some help with the finances But hello, my name's Mike Eagle How the fuck are you guys doing tonight? My friends are superheroes None of us have very much money though They can fly, run fast, read Portuguese None of us have very much money though They know judo with yoga, photography, politics Some of them leap over buildings Writers, magicians, comedians, astronauts None of it mattered when niggas was hungry My friends are superheroes None of us have very much money though They wear the same underwear as billionaires None of us have very much money though Hustlers, beat makers, drug dealers, sculptors Ego, monogical authors and bloggers Some of them talk to the animals None of it matters when niggas was hungry That shit's not valuable Come say it to my face That shit's disposable Come say it to my face It's not authentic though Come say it to my face Was hoping this device might cure my remembering. I'm 87 percent sure I invented it. High adrenaline, I'm rapping on the cake boss. Name on the dressing room, so I ain't lost. Commencing countdown, take off another sound stage, rehearsing a big spacewalk. Little Wayne is an ancient African. Jay Z's been around since the 20s, though. The only new ones is Little B and One Below. We only got a hundred months to go until your hometown's covered under tons of snow. It goes. One, two, three, four, five little Indians When it's all over, I survive on a bending of chips To the men play the memory sticks And I'll flash, take a picture Cause I won't remember That shit's not valuable Come say it to my face That shit's disposable Come say it to my face It's not authentic though 
Come say it to my face That's so ingenuine Come say it to my face My friends are superheroes None of us have very much money though They can fly, run fast, read Portuguese None of us have very much money though They can make hair grease out of fruits and herbs But none of us have very much money though They can take selfies like do buffet None of us have very much money though Thank you guys, man Holy shit Amazing. Thanks, man. You guys are very kind. So, do you drink? Do you get high? I've, I've been drinking in front of you right. this entire time. <laughs> I also usually get high, but I didn't know what the fuck was going to happen here. And that's usually a really terrible time for me to get high <laughs> when I don't know what's going to happen. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, I would freak. I, I, don't, I don't usually get high before this show because I, I, uh, like, I. It'd be curi- curious to go back and like look and like mark the ones where I got high. I remember a long time ago. I, I there was one show I did coke before the show. Oh Jesus! Yeah, yeah. I bought a gun. <laughs> did you come here to elect someone, or did you come here to hear about fear and weakness? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, bef- you, before yeah. Adderall became a, a, a permanent part of my life, I. I I would do coke if it was in my pocket. And some people put it in my pocket. I'm not a rocket. I'm just a light socket shedding light on the cocaine truth. I'm going to fuck your mama like Don Bluth. I'm going to fuck... No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Say it to my face. (laughs) Don Bluth is an animator. He's He's not a hater. He's a celebrator. He did All Dogs Go to Heaven, and he did the sequence from Xanadu where the bird had the leg warmers on it. (laughs) <laughs> um, Wait, that's a, that's a full-on drum kit there? That, that's fucking badass. Yeah, dude, like, each one of these on... Man, this shit is so goddamn complicated. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can hit any of them. You can hit any of them. There's like 64, and he's just rested to one a lot. Jeff's got skills, is what the fuck Jeff's got. I, I, the, there we go, get funky. Again. The things that are funny are happening too fast for me to explain them. The first was that he walked up and said, is this just a thing, and did it, and then after a while you said, you can, you can do it. And then it was the fact that he was just hitting the one. Wait, you know. show, show off for us uh, a bit, Mike. Like, show us what that thing can do. Because it's a bunch of white squares that, you, that don't say anything on it. You, you have to know what they are. Like America. <laughs> you have to program those white squares to make a beat of democracy. Well, see, yeah, this one, this one. This. This one is just, uh, this is just noises. This one's just. <laughs> so this one is a synth on here, and there's also a drum pad on here. Right. Um, this one, okay, this one oh, is coordinated to here. Now it lit up. Yeah, because, okay, this is, that was page, this is page six. Six. This is page five. Okay. And that's coordinated to my software here. So now when you press these buttons, it's triggering the shit coming from Ableton over here. Yo, it's yo, all the ones. It's yo. all gonna happen at once. Yo, 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 yo. I fucked your yo. mama last yo. night. Yo. Uh, but it's just a grid of squares. I mean, yep. you, you, which you, I'm sure like some AM DJs use that. That's just filled with farts. Yep. <laughs> What, what is that called? A soundboard? This, <laughs> this is this is called a launch pad. <laughs> All right. Is that the brand name? That's the the for yeah. the kids out there that want to be an open mic eagle. It's a Novation launch pad mini. <laughs> um, all right. So there's one final chapter of your story, though. We, Shit. Like, like, okay. Because because you're gonna you're gonna die tonight. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I knew that. That's uh, what, what Dan didn't tell you is that we kill all of our guests. Yeah. No. 
But something something took you. You were at that event. There were break dancers there. There were people there, and you're like, wait. Did you ever do any break dancing, Dan? Um, I've dabbled. I bet. <laughs> bet. I mean, put a beat on so we can see some. Of I, I, I I I I I pop a little more than I lock, but. <laughs> Overall, the popping and locking's been done. I actually, but I remember being like, um, ba- like when I was like, probably, I don't know, I might have been seven, anywhere from seven to nine years old, like when, uh, when breaking and uh, when, when it was like break dancing was the thing. It was before your time. You're younger than me, but it was like, like, like the. Like everybody was going like break dancing. The, the, like the latest early, thing early in the streets yeah. is gangs no longer have to have violence. They can solve their problems with dancing. Uh, and and that was really the way weeks. it was being. And there were all these movies coming out like Breaking and Breaking Two, Electric Boogaloo, and all this stuff. And it was like, and and, and my brother and Beat I Street. would mm-hmm. we recorded the movies and we would play them back until the fucking tape heads were seizing and the the static the screen was almost static and we were just trying to like look at what the people were doing and like uh like but that's not how you become a break dancer it so, turns out I mean, we, you know we did pretty much the same shit we just watched the same movies we just had some people around us who actually knew what we were doing knew what they were doing so we but, watched them and we watched the tapes and we just tried to emulate but Same is shit. there in Joseph Campbell's hero's journey? We got you to the goddess point, which is where you go. Oh shit! Okay, I'm open, Mike Eagle. I'm not. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna rap now. And so, what follows that is usually a punishment of some kind, some huge challenge. If your life has adhered to traditional story structure, <laughs> was was there a point where you were massively challenged when you like entered the fray and you're like, I'm gonna. This is what I'm gonna do now. What was their? I mean, was shit. Their big I feel like down? I started with a damn challenge. You know what I mean? Like that doesn't count. Shit. That's like that's like a Hobbit saying like it was hard to leave the Shire. We know. <laughs> I'm asking you. I'm asking you. When did you get your ass kicked after you I decided? I get my ass kicked every day. That's <laughs> what I'm like. What, what was there? There wasn't a big one where after you were like, I'm open Mike Eagle. I'm gonna rap. And then like, was there any point where you were like? fuck, I'm fucking dead. I'm dead. And then you were like, you woke up and you were like, I'm alive! Uh, it, it might be right now. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> it's a, I guess it's okay for the answer to be no. No, I mean, I really do feel like my whole career path is like I've signed up to take lumps every fucking day. Well, like, that's what open mic is, so maybe let's talk about that. So, like, you step on stage. Like, what is that like? Like, what, what the, do you remember the first time you went from making a decision? Like, like, uh, like, like, what do you do? Are you, do you pace your living room, your, your grandparents' basement, and go, like, I'm rapping, I'm rapping, I'm rapping. I'm like, at some point, you sign up for an open mic. Do you have a, like... Well, I used to host all the open mics at college, and that's really when all that shit started and and so high school rapping on street corners basically and then going to college and doing the same shit finding the other people who get together and rap and break dance and all that shit right um and then this band that i used to get on stage and freestyle with sometimes because in the early part of my career that's what a show was for me was showing up somewhere where somebody else had music and fucking freestyling because all i knew how to do they wanted to book me they wanted to bill me and they wanted to pay me but they were like you gotta have a fucking song so you can perform. And so I had to like write four songs and memorize them so that I could perform on a show and not just be like Mr. Freestyle Guy. Um, have you ever been booed? Like, how hard does it get? I haven't, I've never been booed, but I've been ignored. <laughs> <laughs> and like, like that's, that's, and that's how my shit tends to be, is people don't like me. They don't usually feel the need to come up to me and say, I don't like you. They just fucking right. do some other shit and don't. You know what I mean? It is kind of the worst. Don't pay attention. I did shitty improv in Milwaukee, and like the when you were on fire, you were on fire, and then the worst moments were actually just the sound of dinner plates clinking. That type of shit. People clearing their throats. Someone walking up and going, "Uh, "When is this over?" Right. (laughs) Like yeah, I would open for people. You know, like I would get booked to open for people who had fans, and I didn't have any, so I was trying to get theirs, and they were like, "No, we don't (laughs) like you at all." (laughs) You know. Do you? Like, do you have a zone that you go to if you were to walk into a venue and be like, all right, there's three people here and they didn't expect you to show up. Would you be able to just do what you do? Or yeah, are you I've, like a slave to like people's like, like what the venue is? I don't know if I understand that question. Well, <laughs> does it, how much does it affect you? Like, like the energy of the room? Like, like, oh, uh, a lot. 
honestly. Um, you know, and and I do a lot of shit in. in what the if comedy? I told everyone here to just boo you for two minutes while you did it? I don't know. I, uh, what am I? What am I doing? Uh, yeah, why are you thinking? Like I thought it would be a fun experiment, like a weird, like, boo, and then you're rapping. I, I, you know? I, I heard a good story. Uh, my friend Wayne Brady, who does Who's Line, uh, he, he was doing some, um, some corporate events, like some big company, like, like, like a major corporation, and they had all the money in the world, and the main stage that was a room for like maybe five, ten thousand 10,000 people was for Huey Lewis and the News. And because it was the end of this corporate weekend, nobody came. Because they all want to go home or, you know, fuck about, go to the bar, do their thing. And nobody was there except for, like, you know, 30 people in the front row. And there was this giant empty warehouse of a, of a, of a space that they had paid, you know, Huey Lewis and his band, like, you know, a couple hundred grand to play at. And Wayne said he went there and he said they played like it was Madison Square Garden. They completely fucking did it like there was a, a sea of people there. And they played as hard as they would have, as like as, if, if if it were filled, and that was the most show busy thing he'd ever seen. Like uh, uh, people saying like 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 no like like I got my money, my job is to come up here and perform. Fuck the audience. Fuck the f- fuck the turnout. Our job is to get up here and play. And like Huey Lewis and the News is a shitty band. Uh, <laughs> they're not great, but they've the got views mo- of Jeff Davis do not reflect <laughs> Harmontown the podcast. But but. Um, I, I give that band 100% credit for being absolutely amazing. Cause I want but to also, ne- I just want to quibble. That's not necessarily, for a person who's performed for two people doing improv and stuff, uh-huh. that's not fuck the audience. That's the opposite. No, it's that's, saying, it's that's, saying no. no we, we, we have thank one, you, these two people. We, we have, yeah, exactly. 30 people showed up here. It doesn't matter if there's not 30,000. Right, fuck, fuck the lack of audience. No, we, we, like, pl- yeah. we play for the front row, and we play for the back row, even if they're not there, and that showbiz is fuck. I saw the B-52s play the thing, and there was only 70 people there, and they just, like, they hated the audience because there weren't enough of them. <clears throat> like, y- you still got paid. They might, but- have, they might have hate in their hearts for the venue or something that, that, right. that, that, that fucked up. Open Mike Eagle. Can I call you open? You can call me whatever you like. <laughs> uh, like, like, so, the, raised by these grandparents who were, let's call them solipsists. Like, like we don't know. They, like, they were like, keep your nose to the grindstone. Sure. Stay good. Stay out of trouble. Don't, why be like these people outside the front door who are, like, causing trouble, reacting to trouble, all this shit. You stay the course. Then you come to this plot point. Oh, I could rap, though. So, your messaging, your like, are you like, are you selfish or are you altruistic? Are you very how selfish. do you view yourself philosophically? I'm very selfish because my whole aesthetic is is about the value of my own art, because uh, it's like that shit I was saying. Like when I first encountered hip hop, and there the the aesthetic value was on everybody pretending to be the hardest. Right. Right. And to me, that so devalues the individual experience of seeing somebody else could be living right in that same community with them, but suddenly, if I'm not hard, then right. my experience is somehow less authentic than the next person's. Right. And my whole shit is railing against that. So I write about whatever stupid shit I want to write about. That's what I thought I heard there. Yeah, was absolutely. Like fences put up, but in a healthy way, or laser turrets where you're like... That's fucking like fuck you. Yeah. You sound like me in therapy. <laughs> Wait, you're like, but there's a health to that. That's interesting. I'm glad you said that. I don't know. I didn't because to me, I mean, to me, it, it's for the it's for the overall health of like especially the black community because that's a toxic to ass. understand that they can be an individual and, and like feel uh, uh, how they uh, feel. You say individual. Individual. What was that? individual. Oh, okay. I was Got I was it. just doing I was do, doing Archie Bunker going. They could be an individual for Christ's sake, Edith. Um, that that that's what that's what cultural like uh, movements lack for all that they provide. They they take they draw from the bank of individuality. And when we talk about white privilege, one of the why am I explaining this to you? I'm explaining this to myself. I'm explaining this to myself. When we talk about white privilege, one of the biggest privileges is the privilege to be like oh, to be I'm a little individual. bit of this and I'm a exactly. little bit of that. And exactly. I, here comes a beat because I'm talking like a hat. I got a hat on my head. And I, no, I'm kidding. Don't. I was gonna. <sighs> don't. God damn it! Don't do it. Uh, no, but 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 that that's very that, like that solipsism. That's like that, that, that like uh, like I only care about myself. But there's a difference between that and like malignant like 
fuck you. I'm, yeah, I mean, out, I'm only out to get what's mine. I'm, That's yeah, different. Because it's it's not a greed. It's like it's it's like it's from a humanist. It's like who am standpoint. I? Yeah, That's all you know? I could possibly know. And it's like every human's experience is valid and valuable. Starting with mine, but not to shit on anybody else's, but this is my time at the podium and I'm going to do my shit. You know what I mean? Yes, I do know yeah. what you mean. Well, like, like the, my therapist is bummed out about it cause, <laughs> because, because, she, I, you, you, because she would say you are closed, Mike Eagle. And then her job is to open you, and I thought, like, like that's what I'm encountering is like because I have all these like mechanisms, like I can, I'm gonna, I can, I can detect anyone that's gonna tell me what to do from 600 meters, and their head will explode before they knew what happened to them, um, and 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 now I have to understand that that's not keeping me alive anymore. That's actually gonna kill me. Is it? Yeah. Well, I'm not a fucking not you. therapist. No, no, I, I'm, I'm just, I was gonna challenge that but then you're talking about a professional who's helping you so I probably shouldn't do that and she's pretty good and the, and the more I listen to her the happier I get well so, that's great like 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 but but like and it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be the same advice for what you what was your challenge Mike what, what were you gonna say well I mean is that what's going to kill you if it's also like what Powers you? What makes you vital? What, you know, like what yeah. is is? And right now we're having all these arguments. I mean, this is a this is a this is a person who like says like, oh, don't go on Facebook and Twitter. That's secondhand smoke. And then Trump got elected, and she was like, whoops. <laughs> I, not not that being on Twitter and Facebook would have stopped him from getting elected, but at the same time, I was like, come on, man. Like we're like like this is different from dangling chads and like riling yourself up before you go to work in the normal world. I'm, I'm off on a tangent, but. Like I have like debates with her about the difference between defense mechanisms that are making you happy. One of the things that she said to me most recently that I thought was really interesting um, was this idea that like your brain with all its fucking fucked up chemistry, it's like imagine all these like cars whizzing around and you can focus on any one at any time and they all intersect. So like... You might be having a day when you're like, fuck the system, and you might be having a day when you're like, my back hurts, or um, I'm, I'm afraid of death, or uh, like all of these, uh, and I love babies, and I miss my dog, and I like the color blue, and uh, I'm not starting to rap. You don't have to give me a beat. Um, the, the, we folk, you, 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 you fixate. When you fixate, like when you're, so like if a leopard was chasing you, the car you'd follow, <laughs> mixing metaphors, <laughs> would be, I got to fucking get out of here. Right. And that's a healthy version of fixation where you're like, why would you want to talk about Stanley Kubrick's movies right, right, right. while you're right. running from a leopard? It's going to kill you. So f our, we have a tendency as the chimpanzees that we are, that we evolve from, we, uh, we very easily fixate on danger things. And when you're in a conversation with somebody, when you're in a, in a thing that's challenging you, like, like she's like, look ahead. I'm not asking you to not fixate on shit. I'm asking you to fixate even more and look all the way ahead to where that car is going. Is it headed toward a brick wall? Is it headed toward another call? Like, 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 do you, like, do you want to blow up? Or do you want to be friends, get through this alive, be a good boyfriend, like get another drink, uh, like end your show well, like like, or do you want to like, do you want to follow the car that's going to explode? I, I it was like I'm probably disservicing her metaphor, but but that's my new thing. As I'm like, you've been with her for quite a while now, right? The same therapist. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but do you find her like because you, you have an ability to like your to reform my neurology? <laughs> exactly. Like, do, do do you find her a? Uh, do you find her appear like like intellectually like you can listen to her and like and, and dig what she's saying or or like or do you instantly want to shut her down like because you have the ability to turn things into mythology and no i find i find I find her to be somebody who's like super duper smart about shit that I have not had time to study or think about, which is specifically neurology the way the brain works like she doesn't care she never she doesn't go like you should stop drinking. You should be a better, you know, she's like, how are you fucking up? Like, how are you like keeping yourself from being happy? That's too punitive too. She's just more like, like, uh, oh, uh, here's how brains work. Here's how you could be a superhuman. Kind of like, mm -hmm. I don't know. So how, how, how often do you go? Once a week, at least. 
You know, it's a, do you a go plot. together? With someone going good. Do you go together with Cody, or is it, is it singular? That makes me. Now I'm going to go to her once every two weeks. <laughs> because I still have to work on that aspect of myself. I don't like approval. It makes me suspicious. You love approval. Not from those people. <laughs> you know what they are? They're a grid of white squares. <laughs> Hit it. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any, but, but like in that solipsism, because I made you, you, you were candid with me. You said that, which kind of amazed me. I didn't expect to hear that answer from you, but I, I was like, I was like, so like, but you want everybody else to be happy, right? Yeah, no, I, I would love for everybody to be happy. And so, and, 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 and you and I both believe that if everybody kind of focused on like, knew who they were and knew when they were lying and not lying, like that, that would be the beginning of like the solution. Right. Maybe. What That's do you, a great place to how, how much of your, of your lyrics are, are about that? Like, are, are you talking to, to well, the audience? Well, 40% of them are, 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 are about you talk, Cheetos. Are, are, are you talking to yourself? Are, are, you, like, are you getting your own stuff out, like, off, off your chest? Or are you, are you trying I don't, to... You know, I don't talk about like, my, my deepest therapy shit. Like, I don't talk about that type of shit. But um, I, just, I, I tend to honor whatever creative whim I'm in in a moment. And that mostly tends to be about some conversation I'm having inside of myself. Now, that could be about the world or it could be about what the fuck it's like right now on this stage. You know what I mean? But, but if I'm sitting with a beat and I want to write to it, um, my whole thing is whatever nugget or seed that I get, I'm just going to follow that to wherever the fuck it goes. All right. All right. Well, let's do it. Wait! Oh shit! We're we're gonna we're gonna demonstrate we're, we're, our new skills and our therapy and everything. Oh, Let's by the way, Spencer, real quick, uh, we're, hey we're gonna. Guys. I, I'm gonna roll. Di- <laughs> I'm gonna roll dice on my new uh, gnome on my gnome uh, druid character this week, and so we're gonna start that shit next time. Now I heard tell it wasn't gonna be a gnome druid. Are you are you reneging on that? Is it gonna be a gnome druid again? No, it was it was originally an elf druid, but I I, I saw your drawing that was a gnome. So I, I'm gonna go gnome druid. All right. What do, what do you think? Should it should it I not know be that's a gnome what druid? I said last time. Say again. Didn't we agree that it was gonna be a gnome druid? Say again. Didn't we agree that it was going to be a gnome druid? Yeah, and then you texted me on Saturday that I, you didn't want to do it anymore. Dear God, make me a bird so I can fly far, far, far away. <laughs> you know, druids can turn into birds. No, I'm I'm gonna be a gnome druid. I chickened out, but I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to commit. Is, 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 is a gnome druid okay? Yeah, no, it's great. Uh, you seem bummed out about it. I think Dan's bummed out about it. Dan doesn't see or hear us right now. Yeah. He's just ripped on Adderall. That's right a now. good point. He's so focused. I'm going to roll, roll my stats and bother you for a week and a half about my, my new character. Yeah, it'll be great. But I think you should close it for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Close your eyes. Don't, don't. Close your eyes. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Keep closing your eyes. <laughs> Only now I command it. So, as so your Spencer, dark I, I, lord. A, a nope druid is okay, right? Yeah, yeah a nope druid is good. I am the dark lord of darkness. <laughs> Seems redundant. People call me redundant. I'm not a pundit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna run it down. I'm gonna put a feather down with a pillow round. Yo, no, not yo. Yo is a crutch. Yo, here we go. My name is Morpheus. I'm gonna adore Morpheus. Don't think, just rap, just flow, just go. Just put your head on your toe. The flow state. When your head's on your toe, you gotta go to your soul and go down to the buffalo. 
a buffalo is extinct, but your mama's pussy's so deep that it, it, it's like a sink, but that's not an issue. I need a tissue. I'm, I'm gonna cry. Because I miss you. Because you're my baby. Oh. Our Valentine, I said maybe. Oh. I gave you earrings. I gave you a ring. I gave your mama's pussy so much it started to sing. Your mama's pussy has a larynx in it. I'm your mother's I'm your pussy. Mama's pussy. <laughs> it sings out loud. It sings higher than a cloud. I'm deep like a deep sink, like he sings. Your mama's, your mama's pussy. I'm your mother's I'm pussy. Your mother's pussy. Your that ma- hasn't changed. Hasn't changed. Your, your mama's pussy. I'm a singing I'm a vagina. vagina. There's three holes. Let's list them. Hole one, hole one. Hole one's where the fun begun in 6000 BC. It's where the hole comes from the PP. Every woman needs to urinate. But that's where the world started to get created. When the P stream comes out of hole number one. That's hole number one. Hole number one. Hole number two. There's hole two number two. That's for doo-doo. It's called a butt when you poop through. What your colon's going to do? You make the poop with the food, and you eat it when you poop it out, when you're in the mood. Hole three. Fun time. Fun time. Hole three, episiotomy. It's the birth canal, you see? It's where the babies come out. You see? Are they going to have them for tea? Are they gonna, okay, well, we don't have to do this. Okay. All right. Yeah. Hole three. I'll throw anything at you. Please do. Golf ball. Golf ball? Uh, I'm off, y'all. I can't do nothing. I need to press the move button. It's like the move house in Philadelphia. Somebody, I'm asking you to help me. That's what I'm do. I'm on the top of the water just like LP or Kale. Doesn't matter, I can fail. I can struggle, I can sail. I can do all of that across anybody the water. I can body slam you like Abba Sergeant Slaughter on the G.I. Joe. But he was the hero, villain. Doesn't matter, he was chilling in his little A shirt. Y'all can't make me hurt. That's what I say, and that's what I do. I slide through up like Link when he's fucking capturing or rescuing Zelda from Hyrule in high school. I played that shit, and that's what I do. Uh, but no, but I already said that, so now I repeat. You gotta throw me more things. I don't know what the fuck. Hip-hop! That beat was too short. <laughs> Is that it? I think that's it. All right, do... Well, do do uh, clo- close our show with one of your fucking awesome. What do you, are you willing? Can I just order that like a pizza? Of course. You want to do one? Just do your thing. There's nothing I would I would rather do more. All right. Uh, I'm gonna do this this song I just wrote a couple weeks ago about oh, how I don't shit. want people to invite me to their weddings. Okay. So don't invite me to your wedding. You didn't invite me to your funeral. So I'm not so gonna, gonna be on, on time. time. Yeah. yeah, you didn't invite me to your funeral. So don't invite me to your wedding. Yeah, you didn't invite me to your funeral. So I'm not gonna be on time. Yeah, yeah. No backflips and no somersaults and I'm gonna toss Every invite that I come across Then I'ma fight this shit like an underboss Yeah, yeah, some guilt there but it won't grow Heartbroken, I don't know You can ask me if I'm gon' go But I recommend that you don't know And I don't care who gon' be there You can save that shit for a single man I'ma sit here in my studio Elbows deep in a Pringles can, yeah Instincts say run, run from you My brain's so uncomfortable Everything's so combustible 
comfortable I don't even know one Huxtable I'm not gon' front front for you No subterfuge Why well, can't play bum bum a shoot And I'm tryna write a dumb something new Yeah, yeah, this must be some kind of joke Saw that big dumb envelope Might have looked like maybe I was down I had my foot on the ropes Yeah, I was blinking in Thought I was thought down, I was now down, think, again. think again When you brought it up, I was blinking in Thought I was down, now think, think again Yeah, Got a limited time on earth So what's your sideshow worth? I'll watch your slideshow first Yeah, I'm bogus, I'm Joe Dirt Yeah, yeah, after all Let's play some tag or basketball If it's collar shirts or slacks involved Y'all can keep the dress code, that's for y'all You ain't go to mine, I ain't known you then Ain't known you long, ain't no new friends Yeah, we all get it, you go with him And you go with her, some let's smoke some herbs but let's order chicken and baked potatoes Most of weed and just play some Halo Please oh please don't make me fake bro I say all this cause I hate to say no Hate to say no, hate to say no Hate to say no, don't invite me to your wedding Yeah, 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 Thanks <laughs> Open my giggle Open my giggle I believe we are back at Nerd Melt, uh, Meltdown next week, right? And thank you all for having me, and thank you all for being cool. For God's sake, please. I really appreciate it. Google the guy here. and get into him. Uh, next week, we're at, back at Nerd Melt, Melt Meltdown. Hell yeah. I, 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 I'm trying to play close out music, but my, right. my, my well, thing ain't gonna, working. Oh, there's going to be technical Oh, shit. Where, where's my thing at? Where, uh, where's my thing? Or you could just put on an open mic Google beat and yeah, we can yeah, use yeah, that yeah, as our play, outro. Play one of your beats out. And, and we'll do, <laughs> oh, the stool went down. Oh. Power move. It was a display of power. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're gonna be back at Meltdown next week, and uh, but and we'll keep testing this facility and like whatever. I we'll, love it. Let's uh, hear it for Open Mike Eagle. That's fucking amazing. Yeah, hope, play us out, Mike. I hope you'll come back. Play us out because my thing ain't working. Spencer Crittenden, everybody. And I think we'll be playing Pathfinder next week. I think we're, we're, oh, this week, Dan and I are gonna roll characters and we're gonna play. D&D Pathfinder style next week for real. Next week for real. Next week for real. Uh, one more time for Open Mike Eagle. That was fucking better. Next week for real. Dan next Harmon, your real. mayor. I'm Jeff Davis. Next week for real. Next week I would for say real. drive fast and take chances, next but we're in Burbank now and the cops are fucking next wild. Week for real. Yeah, so next really week drive for fast real. and really take chances. Next week for real. Oh, Dan, you want to freestyle us out into a booth Next game? week for real. Tell your mama to the pit get the banana peel. I'm speaking gibberish when I don't think English. I don't think I'm a bit of English. That's not real rap. I'm just kidding. It was a joke. Thank you.